YouTube, it's Rarity and I'm back again with another Tech Card Tuesday, brought to you exclusively through Geek. Up for this week's discussion is Sylphide. Now this is a level 4 wind fairy type monster with 1700 attack and 700 defense points. Its effect reads that it cannot be normal summoned or set, it, must, uh, only, it can only be special summoned by banishing a wind monster from your graveyard, and then if it is destroyed by battle, your opponent discards one random card from their hand. So, what is this going to be good for, you ask? This is for Ritual Beast, which is my latest project. Uh, I've kind of put Burning Abyss on the back burner. I will be working on that. I will have a, uh, a new build for it, especially after seeing um, YCS uh, Prague beating one with uh, Burning Abyss. And uh, I was trying to look at his deck. I was hopefully trying to wait to see if there was going to be a list that came out so I could work with that some. But I did see things like... Rageki Break and Mathematician, so I got I got some ideas to work with. Uh, but anyway, back to Ritual Beast, which uh, that's what I'll be using Sylphid for. Um, he, the idea with him, if you haven't played Ritual Beast, uh, or I'm sure even if you haven't played it, I'm sure you know why there isn't too many people playing it. And the problem is it it has a consistency issue, which is you know kind of a big deal, but. This opens up one more possibility to start off with a good hand. Uh, if you do know the deck already, um, there's a, and, the, and if you don't, you, I highly suggest checking it out. It's at least, you know, if you, even if you don't want to play, it's a very interesting deck, the way it works, and it's really, really cool. Um, but, so the good opening hands would be um, Elder, uh, Ritual Beast Tamer Elder, and Spiritual Beast um, Canahawk. Uh, also, Elder and uh, Rampengu, and uh, you could also do it and replacing Elder with Eteli, because Eteli can bring out Elder uh, so for either Hawk or Rampengu. Not the most optimal play, especially with Rampengu. It, it doesn't work. There's a, there's a great video on uh, Vexicus's channel. I'm actually going to put in the link below. Uh, because it, it is really good. Uh, my friend Pasquale, he teaches you everything you need to know about Ritual Beast. Uh, I was going to do my own video, but then I saw he did that one, and I was like, oh, there's nothing else I have to say about it, because he, he does. He goes over everything. It's a great tutorial. Um, but, so, oh, good opening hands, like I said, Elder and uh, and one of the two beasts, or you could sub Elder for Eteli. Still not the greatest, but, you know, Eteli's honestly not that good of a card in the deck. I don't know why it hyped up to such an enormous, the $30 each still and uh, like I'm only playing two in my deck just because I I don't really like the card in the deck. It sucks because I love the card Eteli. It's such a good card, but the um, the psychic monsters don't only get their effects. They only get their effects if they're normal summoned. So Eteli is like, and they can only be special summoned once per turn. So Eteli is really kind of a bummer. It's a it is a consistency card. It makes you know it fixes your uh, problems though if you don't open up Elder because Elder is like a uh, I forget his name Caster. Evil Swarm Caster, the one that lets you get, uh, get an extra normal summon. Uh, I hated Evil Swarm, so I don't know. But anyway, uh, back to Sylphie. <laughs> Another way to have a great opening hand now, because I'm running two Sylphids in my deck, uh, is with Rampengu and Sylphie. Opening this, uh, again, is not the most optimal play, because the optimal play is Retarded. It's Elder and Canahawk. And it's just, well, I don't, honestly, there's one play better, but it involves opening D. Fisher, and that's just like, you have to be stupid good at Yu-Gi-Oh! to open up the three perfect cards. But uh, Elder and Canahawk is an amazing play, and you're not going to get much better than that. But you better have good option twos. Um, and with that, if you open up Rampangu and Sylphid, you can summon Rampangu, use his effect, uh, let's just say banishing Ulti Canahawk, and then sending... Uh, the regular Canahawk from the main deck to the graveyard. Then you get to uh, use Sylphid to banish the Canahawk to special summon uh, Sylphid from your hand. And then now you can go into a Lavavel Chain, use uh, Lavavel Chain's effect, uh, detaching the Rampangu uh, to send a Tamer. Uh, probably at this point, an Elder I like to send. If I don't open up Elder, I usually don't want to see him ever again um, because, you know, I'm not going to. Keep, I'm not going to ever need that extra normal summon past turn one, usually. Uh, usually, I'm, after that, I'm just searching and adding a bunch of traps and, and working from there. I don't really need any more monsters, and especially summoning two. Um, 
So probably either a Laura or a Wynn. Uh, either one is... Or no, no, my bad, no. Probably uh, an Elder, because you want to draw into an uh, Laura or Wynn, that's what I meant to say. Because uh, now you have monsters in your graveyard and also banished. So if you have a Laura or a Wynn in your hand, either way, you're already set up for next turn. Or if you draw into one, you're set up for next turn. It just... Um, because with this move, you will have Ulti Canahawk and Canahawk banished, and Rampangu and an Elder in your graveyard. And that's, if you don't know, if you haven't played this deck, if you don't know about this deck, setup is everything. It's kind of like uh, dragons. If you, uh, you know, if you remember dragons, you want to have just a whole bunch, primarily in the graveyard with dragons and uh, with ritual beasts. It's more so, you want them banished, but having them in the graveyard is also good. Uh, because it allows uh, it allows a whole bunch of different plays. You can bring out uh, Paleo and start boosting your guys' attack points and, and keep banishing. And it's just an endless cycle, really. You could uh, just keep banishing and then put them back in the graveyard to search for cards and stuff like that. And uh, you know you just gotta keep with it. And you gotta always make sure you're you're ready to you know keep the wheel keep the wheel rolling. You don't ever want to stop. Um, and if you just were to open up a, a Rampangu. You could banish the uh, ulti Canahawk and banish the Canahawk, but past that, you're not really doing anything. Even if you opened up Defissure with, with the Rampangu, you would just have a Canahawk and ulti Canahawk banished. Okay, but not as good as ulti Canahawk and Canahawk banished with Rampangu and uh, Elder in the graveyard. That is a very, very good setup, especially if you have the Trap Card Ritual Beast Ambush in your, um, in your hand. If you open with that, it makes it even better. Because then uh, you have ambush live. It's ready. It with uh, just Rampangu, you can't have ambush live because you have to special summon a spiritual beast and a ritual beast tamer. Um, having having all this setup allows cards like that to be live or as early as possible. And pretty much as soon as uh, since ambush banishes from grave or uh, the banish zone. Um, pretty much as soon as you get your monsters in there, it'll be live for the rest of the game. Um, Unless they return them to your deck somehow. Which, I mean, there are ways to do that, but not really too many ways unless people start creating, siding in crazy things for your Ritual Beast. Um, but uh, let me know what you all think about this card. Uh, uh, oh, also, it's other effect. Uh, if, it, if it is on the field and does get destroyed um, by battle, I believe it has to be battle, I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, it has to be destroyed by battle. Um, that's another, you get to discard a random card for your opponent's hand. Also, it has 1700 attacks, so it's a decent beat stick itself. Um, it has a lot of versatility, I think, and it just opens up, in general, the rank for uh, Exceed Toolbox to use. You get, uh, like, I mean, you can make Exceeds without him, but it's pretty hard. You're usually summoning a Tamer and a, uh, and a Spiritual Beast, and only your Spiritual Beast will level 4, while um, the Tamers are 1, 2, and 3. Um, so, I mean, it is possible to make exceeds without this guy, but this guy just makes it, like, extremely easy to make exceeds. You make exceeds whenever you want with this guy. I mean, as long as you see him. If you see him, you have an instant exceed, almost guaranteed. Um, that rhyme. <laughs> but, anyway, I would love to know what you all think about this card, especially if you're playing the deck. Um, I have what I think is a really, really good build. Um, I, uh, I want to take it. I can't remember what, I think it's the Indianapolis Regional. Um, it's like March 21st or something like that. I would love to go to there and test it out and see how it really uh, really fares, you know. Um, I've been playing at my locals and it's been doing great there. Um, so, uh, but let me know what y'all uh, think about this card and the Virtual Beast deck in general. Uh, as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe both to my personal channel and the Geek channel. This is Rarity Ho. Peace out.